Today, we explore another possible way to maximize a one liter Lenovo Tiny PC for gaming and productivity tasks. This one liter Tiny PC has a PCIe slot, allowing us to install a single slot, low profile GPU. But what if we push the limits and install a full size GPU? In terms of size and power source, achieving this seems impossible. However, there is a possible way to do it by installing an Oculink adapter. Installing an Oculink adapter on this tiny PC is the most flexible, low cost, and easy way to connect an external expansion card. This includes not only an eGPU, but also NAS adapters, drive bays, video capture cards, and more, all of which can be connected via an Oculink dock especially since there are many sleek, compact, and powerful pre-built eGPU docks with a rich selection of I.O. ports to consider. All you need is an Oculink port to connect to these eGPUs. Or if you're a DIY enthusiast, there are plenty of affordable yet powerful GPUs available on the market, allowing us to set up a gaming rig using a Lenovo Tiny PC and an eGPU dock to enjoy a smooth gameplay experience. So now, whether you're a Lenovo Tiny enthusiast or a tech lover. Sit back, relax, and join me as we dive deep into the step-by-step -step process of installing an Oculink adapter on the Lenovo Tiny PC. Let's delve in. Here, I have a Lenovo Think Center M90Q Gen 1. This model has a PCIe slot, and I will install a PCIe X4 to Oculink adapter on this PC. You can also follow the same process on other models, such as the Lenovo M720Q, M920Q, and other mini PCs that have a PCIe slot, like the Minisform MS-01. If a Lenovo Tiny PC is ordered without an expansion card, such as a GPU or network card, it is likely that no PCIe X16 riser adapter will be included you may need to purchase one separately. You can indeed install a single slot, low profile GPU on this PC. However, powerful single slot, low profile GPUs, such as the RTX A1000, RTX 3050, or modified versions of the NVIDIA RTX A2000 and RTX A4000 ADA SFF are typically expensive. Additionally, they tend to run hot in this compact system and can be quite noisy. The GPU I installed on this PC is an RX 6500 with 4 gigabytes of VRAM. It runs older titles well, but it struggles with most recent games, such as The Last of Us Part II Remastered on PC. Unlike other 1-liter mini PC projects from Dell or HP, Lenovo Tiny PCs may have one or two M.2 NVMe PCIe slots. However, these slots are located at the bottom, underneath the motherboard, making it impossible to install an M.2 to Oculink adapter due to the lack of a viable way to route the cable to the upper chamber of the PC chassis. Unlike HP or Dell Mini PC, to install an Oculink adapter on this PC, instead of using an M.2 NVMe PCIe to Oculink adapter, I chose a PCIe X4 to Oculink adapter. This adapter is a standard PCIe expansion card and comes with both a low profile bracket and a full height bracket. You can install this card on any PC, whether it's a desktop, SFF, or mini PC, as long as it has a PCIe slot. It costs only $8 on AliExpress. My Lenovo M90Q also didn't come with a PCIe X16 riser adapter, so I ordered one from AliExpress. This riser adapter is only compatible with the Lenovo Tiny 6. If you're buying one for a different series, such as the Lenovo Tiny 5 or a newer model, make sure to get the correct adapter for your specific PC. Now, let's install the PCIe X4 to Oculink adapter onto the PC using its original low profile bracket. The original low profile bracket could not fit this PC. As you can see, I cannot properly fit the card into the expansion slot of the PC chassis here. I need to design a 3D model of a bracket for this adapter to fit with the chassis of this PC.
Here's the 3D printed bracket for the PCIe X4 to Oculink adapter and the Lenovo ThinkCenter M90Q Gen 1. I need three M3 by five by five and M3 by five screws to mount this bracket to the chassis. Now let's embed the female threaded insert nut using a soldering iron. To install the Oculink adapter in this small space, I need to install the parts one by one in order. First, install the PCIe X16 riser adapter into the motherboard's PCIe slot. Then, secure the PCIe X16 riser adapter to the chassis with a screw. Step two, install the 3D printed bracket onto the chassis. Secure it with two screws, one at the rear and another on the right side. You can now inspect the accuracy of the 3D model design screw hole to see whether it fits or not. Now let's remove the original bracket from the Ocklink adapter. Now let's secure the Ocklink adapter to the 3D printed bracket using two screws. All right, now I have successfully installed the Oculink adapter on the Lenovo ThinkCenter M90Q Gen 1. Now let's set up an eGPU dock test bench to check whether the Oculink adapter installed on this PC is working properly or not. Here, I have a workstation AMD Pro GPU, the AMD Radeon Pro W5700. This GPU has similar specifications to the RX5700. Believe it or not, I bought this GPU for just $99. You can also check eBay for great deals, or you might find this GPU for around $130, the same price as the RX 6 400. However, the price could spike once this video is released. All right, my eGPU test bench setup is now complete in just a few minutes. However, please keep in mind that this is just a test bench eGPU so it does not have a sleek appearance or a well-designed case. If you're interested in more eGPU setups, check out my other videos. I've posted many different eGPU setups featuring various case design styles on my channel. Now, let's connect the Lenovo Tiny PC to the eGPU dock using an Oculink cable and check whether the GPU is installed properly on Windows. Using the GPU-Z app on Windows 11, we can see that the AMD Radeon Pro W5700 is installed on this PC, featuring eight gigabytes of GDDR, six VRAM, and 2,304 stream processors, running at PCIe X3 Gen 3. While the adapter and eGPU docks support PCIe X4 Gen 4, this Lenovo Tiny PC only supports PCIe Gen 3. Therefore, this setup would provide greater benefits with a newer mini PC model. In this video, we cover how to install an Oculink adapter on a Lenovo Tiny PC. However, let's try some gameplay and see how well this setup performs. The first game I want to test is the most recent PlayStation game released for PC, The Last of Us Part II Remastered. With graphics preset set to high and frame generation turned off, the gameplay achieves around 60 to 70 FPS and runs smoothly. However, we still cannot fully utilize the GPU's maximum oh, potential, 
as it is limited by PCIe X4 Gen 3. Now, let's turn on frame generation. I'm not exactly sure how this function works, but when we enable the frame generation option, the FPS doubles and the gameplay reaches around 90 to 120 FPS. parts of the city that were lost to the infected. Or the rebels, you didn't grow up in a QZ. I'm starting to get that impression. Now, let's try God of War Ragnarok at 1080p. I set the graphics preset to high and turned off frame generation. With these settings, the gameplay achieves around 60 FPS. Now, let's turn on frame generation. With frame generation enabled, the FPS doubles, boosting the gameplay to an average of 100 FPS. Now let's run the Black Myth, Wukong benchmark tool at 1080p with the high graphics preset and frame generation turned off. The benchmark results show an average FPS of 63 with the high graphics preset and frame generation turned off. The last game I want to test is the Resident Evil 4 Remake at 1080p. I set the graphics preset to graphics priority mode which is equivalent to a high preset. However, this game does not have low, normal, or high graphics presets. Instead, it offers performance, balance, and graphics priority modes. In conclusion, I hope you found this demonstration useful in showing another way to upgrade your Lenovo Tiny PC with an Oculink adapter installation. This setup could be a great option if you're looking to enhance your system's performance without replacing your entire rig. Experimenting with different configurations can open up new possibilities, and I encourage you to try out these ideas and see what works best for you. More tips and ideas are coming soon, so stay tuned for additional guides and insights. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to sharing more on how you can get the most out of your PC.